Red Bull's narrative begins with the humble beginnings of Chaleo Yovidia, the founder of TC Pharmaceutical Industries. In 1923, he was born in Petit, one of Thailand's 76 provinces, 330 kilometers north of Bangkok. His precise birth date remains a mystery. His parents were poor Thai Chinese immigrants who raised ducks and sold fruit to make ends meet. His father was an immigrant from Hainan. Despite having limited access to formal education, Chaleo initially worked for his parents before relocating to the bustling city of Bangkok in search of better opportunities. He eventually became a sales representative for antibiotics before venturing out on his own to establish TC Pharmaceuticals, a small manufacturing company. They produced antibiotics and by 1968 become one of the largest pharmaceutical manufacturers in Thailand. As TC Pharmaceutical Industries thrived, Chaleo's income grew with it, allowing him to invest more and more into his business. However, Chaleo's journey to success was anything but smooth. He faced stiff competition from larger and better-funded pharmaceutical companies, and it was only after he stumbled upon a stroke of luck that his fortunes began to change. Chaleo noticed that people around him in Bangkok enjoy energy drinks, but the majority of the in Thailand available ones were foreign imports. Some of them were no-name mixtures and the single other one, a Japanese brand called Lipovitan, which had a strong medicinal taste. He also noticed that all these alternatives were marketed towards wealthier residents in Bangkok. At that time, 70% of Thailand's population lived in rural areas, not in Bangkok, and the average person was surviving on just $2 a day. Chaleo realized that those who would benefit from energy drinks the most were low-paid workers from that rural areas, just like he used to be. That meant that there was a massive untapped market and big opportunity, because there was no energy drink marketed towards the people that actually needed it the most. In the 1970s, Chaleo started to develop his own uniquely flavored energy drink. He realized that if he could get rid of the medical taste while still keeping the benefits that you get if you drink Lepovitan and reach the massive untapped mark of blue-collar workers from rural areas, he would strike an absolute home run. He started development and chose taurine as the primary compound in his energy drink because it provides a significant performance boost, especially when someone is sleep-deprived. He also added caffeine as a stimulant, B vitamins to support cell metabolism, and two types of sugar to provide a source of energy. With the chemistry figured out, Chaleo's energy drink was ready to be introduced to the market, and he named it Crating Dang. History was written, and the first branded Thai energy drink was born. Chaleo's next move was to create a brand for his energy drink, and he wanted to communicate the strength and power of his product. Part of the bold branding was the logo itself, which features a yellow sun as the background and two large red bulls. Sounds familiar, right? Fun fact, the animals referred to as bulls in this context are not actually cattle, they are gar, a wild bovine species native to Southeast Asia. Gore are the largest of the bovine family, with adult males reaching over 7 feet in height and weighing more than 3,000 pounds. These bulls are known as crating in Thai. Now you can start to see how the name Red Bull came to be. The Thai word crating means wild gower, which reminds the Westerners of a bull. The Thai word dang means red. If you put the two together, you would get Red Bull. Crating Dang was released to markets in 1976. Chaleo had no idea how enormous his creation would become, and it's safe to say that many experts didn't either. First, Chaleo's energy drink struggled to gain traction. It was initially sold only in pharmacies and marketed towards rural Thai laborers who needed a quick energy boost. As the Thai economy began to industrialize, however, the demand for the drink grew. The working class found the stimulant properties of the drink to be particularly helpful in improving speed, endurance, and concentration. Within a few years, the drink's popularity skyrocketed, especially among truck and taxi drivers, factory workers, and construction workers. Chaleo had always promoted the drink as a stimulant, and this messaging resonated with the working class. They needed a pick-me-up to get through the day solution, and Chaleo's beverage was the perfect one. Chaleo's marketing strategy was distinctive, and he applied what he discovered earlier and chose to target rural areas instead of the urban centers where other competitors had a stronger presence. He used a unique marketing strategy, 
offering free samples to truck drivers in order to gain a foothold in the provincial market. According to Chaleo's son, this approach was not widely used at the time, and it helped the company establish a strong brand identity. Early advertisements featured laborers enjoying the drink on a wooden platform in a rural setting, drinking from tumbler glasses to promote creativity. His approach, coupled with his sponsorship of local Thai boxing matches, helped establish the brand's image of a blue-collar beverage. It also created the association between crating and Thailand's beloved sport Muay Thai, which is a material arts combat sport that dates back to the 16th centuries and is an integral part of Thai culture. Muay Thai was also the foundation upon which the Japanese developed kickboxing in the 1960s. That idea again tied in perfectly with the carefully designed branding of the beverage, the two bulls that are wild gaur represent power, the color red represents perseverance, and the backdrop of the sun symbolizes energy. Muay Thai gained international popularity in the 1970s, and Chaleo capitalized on this rising trend to promote crating dang. As a result of this approach, the drink gained immense popularity, surpassing all competitors except for Lipovitan in 1976. But that didn't last long as Crating Dang ultimately captured the largest market share in 1977, just one year later. During the 1980s, Chaleo began expanding his business internationally, starting in Singapore and later in Hong Kong. This expansion helped turn Thailand into one of Asia's booming economies. Chaleo was fortunate to have started his energy drink business during a time of incredible economic growth in Thailand, spanning from the 1970s to the 1990s. During this period, Thailand's GDP skyrocketed and per capita income tripled, positioning the country as a major economic player in Southeast Asia. Chaleo's energy drink quickly became a national favorite, embodying the resilience and fortitude of the working class. All this success led to the eventual creation of the now worldwide famous brand Red Bull, which is not crating dang but rather an inspiration with a different twist to it. Red Bull was co-founded by Chaleo Uvidya and Dietrich Mateschitz in 1987. But who is Dietrich Mateschitz and how did it came to be? Born in 1944 in St. Marain, Austria, to a family full of officers and priests, Mateschitz convinced his mother to let him study ship construction in Vienna, the only program not available in his hometown. He enjoyed life in Vienna, working as a ski instructor before he went on to study. Although he changed universities multiple times, he eventually went on to study at the Vienna University of Economics and Business for a decade. After years of studying, he graduated with his marketing degree in 1972. Mateschitz started his career with Unilever, where he worked as a marketer for detergents. He later joined Blendax, the German cosmetics company, where he worked on various projects, including the marketing of Blendax toothpaste. Despite traveling the world, he grew bored with his job and the monotony of it. He questioned whether he wanted to spend the next decade the same way he spent the last one. But it wasn't until 10 years later that he made a discovery that would change his life forever. It was during one of his business trips for Blendax, while traveling from Bangkok Airport to the city center, Mateschitz discovered crating dying and realized that it was effective in treating his jet lag. Although he had enjoyed his visit to Thailand and trying crating dying, it was during a later trip to Hong Kong that he became motivated to pursue the energy drink industry. While in Hong Kong, he read a news article stating that Lipovitan was Japan's largest taxpayer. Being the marketing genius he was, Dietrich recognized this as a business opportunity he could not ignore. The success of energy drinks in Asia was a turning point for him. Realizing that there was nothing like it in the West, he immediately saw the potential for global success and decided to quit his job. Dietrich set out to find Chaleo, but at first, Chaleo was hesitant. However, Dietrich was persuasive and tried to convince Chaleo to invest $500,000 of his personal savings for a 49% ownership stake. Chaleo said yes, and Dietrich followed. The remaining 2% ownership stake went to Chaleo's son. However, Mateschitz was entrusted with the responsibility of managing the company. For the next three years, Dietrich analyzed the market, worked on the concept and design, and hired a research firm to test the product. Unfortunately, that turned out to be a disaster. 
Trial groups found the drink to be disgusting and said it left a sticky feeling in their mouth, leading to skepticism about the taste, logo, and brand. The general consensus was that Red Bull would fail, and some recommended abandoning the mission. Despite this, Dietrich chose to trust his instincts and pursued his vision. He started setting up offices in Austria and working on product distribution. However, he soon discovered that they would face further obstacles in getting approval from the ministries of health in most European countries, as the product's ingredients had not been used in anything else on the market. He spent the next three years adapting the drink for Western tastes and refining the marketing strategy. Dietrich transformed Red Bull's packaging from medicine bottles to attractive aluminum cans in blue and silver colors, while also adding carbonation to suit the European market. Despite these changes, the results of the research firm proved to have some validity as people were hesitant to try the drink, causing financial struggles that required personal investments to stay afloat. But they managed to overcome those obstacles, and the official launch of Red Bull took place on the 1st of April 1987 in Austria. But Dietrich also knew, as pioneers of the energy drink category in the Western world, it would take time to win over skeptical consumers. In contrast to Chileo's success in Thailand, Dietrich faced the challenge of marketing Red Bull to a continent with a different culture. He believed Red Bull would work best as a party drink, but traditional advertising methods would not appeal to the younger generation he was targeting. Therefore, he had to find creative ways to market Red Bull without alienating his target audience. Dietrich's marketing tactics were truly ingenious. He enlisted students to have their Volkswagen Beetles or Coopers decorated with large Red Bull cans on top. And he also hired students as brand managers. These brand managers were essentially paid to host huge parties where they would give out free Red Bull cans to promote the drink. From these parties, dozens of cocktail recipes using Red Bull emerged, such as the Jaeger Bomb, the Jumping Jack Flash, and the Liquid Cocaine. This marketing strategy proved to be brilliant, and during the first year of its launch in 1987, Red Bull sold over a million cans in Austria. The word quickly spread, and Red Bull started to swap over to Hungary and Slovakia and to Germany and the UK. By the time Red Bull entered the US market in 1997, it was selling one million cans every day. Yes, you heard that right, one million cans every single day. In an effort to promote the drink further and broaden its party audience, Dietrich followed Chaleo's lead by sponsoring extreme sports events and athletes. It fit like a glove because Dietrich was an avid sports enthusiast himself. He was also a proud owner of a pilot's license and well aware of the rise of extreme sports during the 1980s. Fun fact. That's one of the reasons why he came up with the drink's iconic slogan... Red Bull gives you wings. Dietrich's first foray into the world of sports came in the 1990s as they dove into the wild world of extreme sports, sponsoring daredevils and adrenaline junkies as they flew, dove, and raced to new heights. They even sponsored Zeno Müller, the Swiss sculler, who won gold at the Atlanta Olympics in 1996. But Red Bull didn't stop at sponsorship. They wanted to make a name for themselves and create events that would capture the world's attention. And boy, did they deliver. From the wacky Red Bull soapbox race to the breathtaking Red Bull Stratos program, they've broken records, defied gravity, and given us all something to talk about. Their junior racing team, Scuderia Toro Rosso, has produced some of their best drivers, who usually move on to the senior team, Red Bull Racing, which they acquired in 2004. Red Bull Racing has won eight titles, thanks in part to their star driver, Sebastian Vettel. Red Bull has also made notable acquisitions in the world of Formula One, making them one of the biggest sponsors in one of the most expensive sports in history. Red Bull allocated a whopping 84% of their gross profit, equivalent to $2.1 billion, to their marketing budget in 2011 and now boasts an extensive and diverse event portfolio, encompassing sports from freestyle motocross to downhill ice skating. Dietrich's love for aircraft also led him to venture into other sports events. In October 2012, Felix Baumgartner's record-breaking skydive from a height of 24 miles made the news. Later, Dietrich teamed up with pilot Sigi Angerer to create the Flying Bulls, an aerial display team that now performs around the world. Hangar 7 in Salzburg, 
houses their impressive collection of planes and vehicles, and was designed by the Austrian architect Volkmar Bergstaller. Lately, Red Bull has built a top-notch sports facility called the Athlete Performance Center, offering a wide range of support services for elite athletes from physiotherapy to mental performance training and nutrition advice, regardless of whether they're sponsored by the company or not. However, Red Bull faced some legal challenges in early 2010s. In 2013, a class-action lawsuit claimed that the brand's popular slogan, Red Bull Gives You Wings, was false advertising. Although it is highly unlikely that people really believe this, Red Bull settled for $13 million, with half of the amount going to disappointed customers. A year later, the company faced another lawsuit in the U.S., which found the caffeine claims on their cans to be misleading. This resulted in compensation for American customers who bought the drink between 2002 and 2014 and a change in their slogan, adding two asterisks to clarify the caffeine content. It's no secret that Red Bull's meteoric rise to success is a fascinating tale that has captivated entrepreneurs and marketers alike. In just a few short years, the energy drink brand transformed from a small regional product into a global powerhouse, turning both Kaleo and Dietrich into billionaires, proving that following one's intuition can pay off. While data, facts, and research are important, it's also crucial to listen to your instincts, just as consumers do when making purchasing decisions. By creating a new market for energy drinks and mastering the art of buzz marketing, Red Bull was able to reach millions of consumers around the world. One of the keys to Red Bull's success was its ability to create a unique brand identity that resonated with its target audience. Recognizing that their product required a fresh approach to advertising, Chaleo and Dietrich adopted a novel marketing approach. Today, Red Bull is larger than ever. As Red Bull officially stated, a total of 11.5 billion cans of Red Bull were sold worldwide in 2022, representing an increase of 18% against an already very successful 2021. Despite the emergence of similar brands like Monster and Rockstar and having to deal with class-action lawsuits, Red Bull successfully continues to defend the throne of the energizing beverages. While Chaleo and Dietrich may no longer be with us, both of them left heavy imprints on our modern culture. Chaleo created something truly remarkable, turning a niche market into a billion-dollar industry which was elevated even further by the vision and passion of Dietrich and him taking a page from Chow's playbook and combining his passion for extreme sports with his business. With Red Bull, they managed to create something that would outlive both of them and ultimately become one of the most recognizable brands in the world. The story of Red Bull serves as inspiration for man and has inspired countless other brands to think outside the box and take risks in pursuit of their own entrepreneurial dreams. And while the energy drink market may be crowded and competitive, Red Bull's story serves as a reminder that with creativity, determination, and a little bit of luck, anything is possible. What is your opinion on Red Bull and what is your favorite energy drink in general? Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments down below and let us know a topic we should do next. Also, if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you'd like to see more videos about brands and their history, make sure to subscribe and visit our channel. Thank you for watching. We see you in the next one. Bye-bye.